Hello, this is a quick and simple tutorial on how to make a VJ driver using FPGA and we'll be doing it in VHDL. So quickly the basic uh quickly get to the basics. Uh VJ was made for CRT monitors originally. Uh, this is a side view of a CRT monitor. Uh, here's the cathode and heating coil and a high voltage applied to it which would send out a beam of electrons. There's a phosphor coating on the other side which means it illuminates when the electron beams hit it and it also attracts it as well because it's positively charged. So this beam is not very focused so there's some magnets to focus it and to deflect it as well four magnets one two three four if i oops if i draw a monitor on the this is from the side here's it from the front you'll have the four magnets something like this deflection magnets deflection coils and then they'll steer the beam, usually it will be right in the middle, it will steer the beam pixel by pixel. This is happening extremely fast, obviously, because you'll have to draw an entire screen or frame multiple times in a second. And for this a uh, tutorial in particular it's going to be a 640 by 480 resolution at 60 fps 60 frames per second uh, because of how the electron beam works it needs time to speed up so it actually draws here first and then it goes and then slow down and then it needs to go back to its starting position again and this is known as the back porch and the front porch and when it goes back it's known as the retrace or more modernly it's called the sync pulse and this is all you need to know to create your horizontal synchronization sig signal and your vertical syn synchronization signal which is called h-sync and v-sync and H-Sync and V-Sync is always on until it's on the retrace, then it goes low again. And I do have a drawing I made, or a diagram I made in paint. Of, because this will be necessary for the timing, uh, when we actually put it into the... Uh, FPGA, VHDL. So here's the back porch. How about this play area? Here's the front porch. <coughs> <coughs> and and here's the retrace. Or the sync pulse. And this will go back and forth. And if I go back one, we'll count the positions. Our horizontal position will increment by one. When it gets to the very end, we'll reset the horizontal position to zero and at the same time we increment the vertical position by one to go on the new line. And this will go on until we reach the end. So this will happen, uh, the horizontal, uh, the back porch, display area, front porch and the retrace. And then when it's in the display area, that's when you can draw stuff to the screen. Uh, one thing you might notice with this is it's when you draw to displays, it's nice to have to start at zero, zero and end at your resolution. So you can do that. You can do some subtracting from these position counters. We can swap around how it works. So this is how it would be normally, the H-Sync and the V-Sync. 
the back porch is first, then display area, the front porch sync pulse, same for the vertical synchronization. But you can switch it like this, and this is much nicer, you don't have to make a sep uh, two more signals in your FPGA to, for the X position on the screen and the vertical, the Y position. You can just use these two, the H, H position and V position for your drawing as well at the same time. So it will look like this now, your H-Sync and V-Sync. Uh, well, it's, it's pretty much the same. So that's it really. Uh, it's important because you have your um, input to here. I just draw it from here, uh, VGA. If you have H-Sync and V-Sync, I just call them uh, HS and VS. And you have red, green and blue. R G B. Uh, these are analog signals. I think it's from zero to 0 0.7 volts each. And depending on how, if the voltage is at its highest, it'll be uh, red, completely red. If it's off, uh, there'll be no red. Uh, you have red, green, and blue. And it's important to only have the red, green and blue active when it's in the display area. If it's in the back porch, the front porch or it's retrace, uh, it has to be turned off. Uh, for now, I'm just going to do these as one bit values. So it's either zero or 0 0.7 volts. If you have a 3.3 volts from your FPJ, what you'll have to do is uh, make a voltage divider, basically. So resistor, this will go to your VJ connector and then to ground. So choose the right two values for these resistors to get 0 0.7 volts out. Uh, that's it really. Oh, and make sure it's a low current. So use it in K, 10K, 1K, that kind of, don't do in ohms. Uh, yeah, that's it. Time to start the project. Okay, one thing before starting is to know about what clock you're going to be using. For me, uh, I'm doing 640 by 480 display, uh, including the extra pixels needed for the back porch, front porch, and retrace. Uh, 640 horizontal changes into 800, and the vertical changes into 525. Uh, I got this. From, I'll open Edge because why not? Uh, call it VJ Timing. So at 60 Hz refresh rate, uh, here, well, firstly, let's go to this. Here's the horizontal timing line. The visible area is 640. The front porch is 16 pixels. That's at the front. Well, we'll start from the back. The back porch is 48. Then the display is 640, front porch is 16, and sync pulse is 90, uh, 96. Uh, these numbers are going to be needed. These numbers are going to be directly put into the, the code. And same for the back porch. And if you notice, this is the clock we need for to get this to get a 640 by 480 at 60 hertz. What I'll be doing to keep it simple, I'm go I have a 50 megahertz clock. I'm just going to divide it exactly by 2 and get a 25 megahertz clock. It's not going to be a big deal. It's just going to be just below 60 fps, 59 or 58, 
probably 59. Okay, so making a new program. I've got my VJ name program so far, so um, I just call it VJ tutorial, I guess. Description uh, VJ driver. For now, it's it's uh, probably going to draw a box in it as well to make sure it works. So that's fine. Make sure this is HDL important uh, choose your chip which you have I'm just showing it can be done on a relatively small one make sure your preferred language is VH VHDL it might say Verilog as well it's not saying it for me that's fine and that's all finish the project now need to make a, uh, a module this is going to be the VJ driver itself and for now I'm not going to split it up into separate modules especially if you want to draw more I mean it is a good thing to do but just in the case of this FPG I have it's so small adding those extra signals is uh, I don't want to do that to take up space for now but for now I will call this the VJ driver since it will be the module and then yeah, it's probably best to split it up later if you want to draw stuff. But for the testing, it's not going to be split up. It's going to be straight into the VJ driver, which will get deleted afterwards. So input is the clock. This is the 50 megahertz clock. So I should actually call it 50 megahertz, uh, not percent, uh, 50 megahertz. I'll just call it clock because I'll, I'll call the 25 megahertz uh, clock 25 or something. Reset, good to have. And then the rest is going to be output. So H sync and V sync. And I'm not typing it properly. H sync and V sync. This is all we need to wake up the monitor. If you have a modern monitor, it will show you your refresh rate and your resolution from the H sync and V sync timings. But since we want to actually use it, we need our red, green, and blue. And this is going to be single bits. So just a bus, one bit each, two to zero, three bits. And that's all that's needed. Nothing else needs to be added unless you want to add, uh, make interaction with your screen for later, add some buttons to move things. But for now, just doing the basic driver. So first thing to do uh, before actually doing this is since we're going to be doing addition we need the unsigned library I've been looking around some people say not to use the unsigned but it causes no problems for me so this is going to be the 25 megahertz clock it's just a single bit so standard logic and it can be initialized to zero for now I might make errors during this but they will be uh, fixed if I detect them if the program detects it that is so for our clock divider we just need to look at changes in the clock to call this process that's the only thing that needs to be look at, looked at not the reset it's not important to reset this clock uh, the 25 megahertz clock you can if you really want to but there, there's no point so the only thing to do here is to well I'll, I'll write it first then I'll explain what's going on so if the clock changes and the clock is equal to 1 then you invert the clock, the 25 megahertz clock equals not clock 25 so let me explain that here's our 50 megahertz clock or whatever frequency you have well if you have a different frequency you'll have to uh, make a counter for your clock So here's our uh, 50 meg clock and since it's 
uh, the co what I wrote was a clock event if clock event means or anything event means a change so here's where it changes on the rising edge and the fallen edge is the change so if I just did if clock event uh, clock 25 equals not clock 25 it will get called every time the if every time the clock changed and that's not good in this case because it will just keep a 50 megahertz clock so the second part as you can already guess now what I'm doing uh, clock equals one so every time the clock so we saw that it's initialized at zero so every time the clock changes and it's equal to one which is here and here and here and here and here then the clock the 25 megahertz clock will invert so it changed so it inverted to one okay another change inverts to zero again and so on and as you can see the period of this is half or double sorry double the original the frequency is half and this gets a perfect 25 megahertz clock as compared to the 50 this is good when you just want to divide your clock by two it's very good uh, if you want to divide it by different amounts you have to make as I said a counter and use either the value of the counter or a certain bit of the counter to if you're just dividing it by two you just make a counter and look at the bits of the counter if you want to divide it by if you want to get a specific frequency you will have to make the counter count up to a certain number and then reset again I'm not going to go into that there's plenty of uh, tutorials and it's not too hard to figure out so now that this has been made this is not needed anymore normal clock not needed we have the clock which the whole system is going to run off now I should have probably made it in capitals but it's okay okay next thing we want to make make the h-sync and v-sync signals but to do that we need to count the positions as shown in oh wait, I guess in this one so just want to counter and actually the first thing to do I'll go back on here and get all these numbers so 640, 16, 96, 48, 800 uh, I'll write them all uh, be back. Okay, so two things I did. I added this library. I uncommented this, so it's okay. And I added uh, all the timings in uh, this order. So we'll start at the horizontal display area, then we'll go to a back porch, then the retrace. The front porch, the retrace, and then the back porch. Same for vertical. So this is in order now. So I just called it horizontal display, horizontal front porch, horizontal sync pulse, horizontal back porch. Same for vertical. And I did at 639 because we're going to start the count from 0, not 1. But it doesn't affect these numbers. It just affects the first, the initial one. So this, it, you can make it start from 1, but oh well. This is simple anyway. So this is going to be for later. Or no, it's not. No, it's not. We'll use it in the counter as well. Uh, so I'm not making it the simplest way possible, but still very simple. So anyway, uh, have a horizontal position counter process and this is going to look at 25 megahertz clock and then if we reset it 
it will reset and process and I can never spell the game so just to be lazy I'll copy this paste this uh, delete this but firstly before we get to the position counter if reset is equal to one or zero depending on how you've connected it then Uh, and I never actually gave the name for the counters, so uh, H pause or H pause. Uh, I'm not sure how to do this. I guess I'll do it the, the C the C program in a way. And I'm using integers to make it easier to read. You can do it with vectors as well, but it's up to you. So horizontal position and vertical position. Uh, initialize them to zero. You can even set a range for them. You'll have to uh, add these together from zero to this range, but this is fine. So the free set equals one. Horizontal position goes back to zero. Reset again. Else, else if. rise in edge of our clock now we're making the horizontal position counter which will is fully synchronized with the clock at the same frequency as the clock so if the horizontal position is equal to and this is why I was thinking should I make a another value or this will be a four input and gate basically Oh, a bit more. But. Uh, okay, why not? HD plus HFP plus HSP plus the back porch. So if it's all these added together, it's at the very end, basically. Else, and if then so firstly if it's not at the end just increment it by one equals h pos plus one if it is at the end reset it back to zero again h pos equals zero but also one of you now I'm going to split them up into two two functions so I could do the vertical position counter here as well in the single but uh, it's better to split them up to show what's going on so reset reset back to zero so this is the part you really have to look at uh, put them in brackets just to be safe uh, I guess So if the horizontal position is at the very end, because uh, if you add these all together, you get to 799. Because we started at zero, it's going to be at 799, not 800. If it's at the end, reset. Otherwise, count. So it's just going line, back to the beginning, do the line of pixels, back to the beginning. It's not going down yet because the vertical position hasn't been done yet. That is the next step. So again, to be lazy. It, you can make errors when copy and pasting, but I sh it's not a long bit of code because the vertical position is almost the same. There's a bit, bit of difference, but pretty much the same. But now, well, w one addition to here, we're going to look at the horizontal position because we need to know we only call the vertical position when the horizontal position is at the end. 
So firstly, change all the horizontal positions to vertical. That's way. Okay. But the thing with this is Uh, you can synchronize off the clock, or you don't. No, I'm going to keep it synchronized. So what I'll do is add another if. So I'm just thinking of the if I can do it a different way. Oh, I, I missed this. If then and if so only when our horizontal position is at the very end it will work it will count up and same thing when this this will increment by one if we're at, um, if we're not at the end of the vertical position if if we're at the end it will reset back to zero this will only get called only when we're at the end so horizontal position then it will just call once but this will have reset so it's not going to call again until we're at the one so go back down retrace go back down retrace at the very end then the vertical retrace that at the very end so this is the counters actually i uh i know the cases is it's not case sensitive vhdl but it's better to have it like this for re readability. Readability. So vertical position, horizontal. This is fine. This works. You can do it in one process. I did it in two. Even with your H sync and V sync, you can do it in one, but it's probably not the best. So next process is to actually make the H sync and V sync. It's not not very simple. You can tell where I come from how from how I spell synchronization. So look at the clock twenty five. Twenty five megahertz clock. You can look at reset as well. We'll reset the H sync and V sync. And the horizontal position for clearly. That's all you need to look at. Uh, not process, begin and end process. So we can copy the same structure of this. Have to delete it. Oh. So let me just delete everything on the inside. And I'm going to do. I'm going to put everything with the clock as well. Y yeah, it's it's good to do that because it could, could get cold more uh, continuously. So we're not doing uh, H sync equals zero. Okay, so back to this picture. We'll look. We're not looking at this one. Looking at this one instead. So, if the horizontal position is between zero and uh, six five five, so six five six, six five five, yeah. So okay, if it's less than or equal to six five five, it's a one. It's a high. If it's between 656 six and, again, uh, plus the, okay, yeah, okay. If it's between 656 six and 750 or 51, it's one of these, it, it's a low. And if it's between these two, it's high again. So that's what we have to write. If it's between these two numbers, the horizontal position, high. If it's here, low, high. You get the idea, same for vertical. So this is very simple. 
it's it's easy to make a mistake here if you're you know, to be a pixel off if you're not sure it has to be less than or less than or equal to or greater than or greater or equal greater than or equal to. So I hope this works. So if H pause H pause is less than or equal to six five five. Yes. Or of course I'm not using numbers. That's why I, I wanted to make it work for any resolution. So it's display and then the front porch sync pulse and retrace. So plus HFP HFP. Okay. Uh, so this is in the first part where it's high, then it will go low, but deal with that later. Or H pause or H pause position keep it in brackets, keep it all the same is greater than yeah great okay yes 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 plus plus the h sync pulse okay uh this should work uh i hope you see what i'm doing here So H sync equals zero. Again, this is very simple. Nothing difficult about this. If you look, if H position is less than horizontal display plus the front porch here. So if it's less than Six five five, or if it's greater than these three added together, so one, two, three. So if it's greater than these three, or if it's less than these two, the number go high. Else, where else can it be? It can only be in this. Uh, it can only be this value because after seven nine nine, it resets back to zero. So that's what we do here. And this will give you the exact, the exactly time to pulse that you need. And I'm not sure if I can check it on my oscilloscope because I don't have my digital oscilloscope with me. But we can just test it by making it work on the display, the VGA monitor. Anyway, that's it for horizontal. I'm just going to copy it for vertical because it's exactly the same thing. Except for you change H sync and horizontal position for vertical position. So V pause, V pause, V sync, V sync, vertical sync. And then V vertical, 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 vertical. That's it. Didn't miss anything? Oh yes, I did. You don't need to, but it, it gives you a warning if you don't put st uh, things that you use in uh, looking at in the process. So horizontal, vertical, that's fine. And that's it, that's all you need. You can start drawing now based off the position but it's a good thing just to add one more process. Uh, I call it video on. So we have a video on when it's in the right area and then you draw whether it's on or off. So signal video on, on. 
So if this bit is a zero, you can't draw. If it's a one, you can draw. So just initialize it to can't draw at the moment. And that's it. I just call it video on. So clock 25, 25 megahertz clock, horizontal position and vertical position. Uh, I guess the reset as well. Uh, nope, no, no, no. Again, copy the, actually I could copy this whole. And if free set equals one video on, and I just realized what I did wrong is since for this is a vector, so that came from here and it came from here. There might be a few errors, uh, we'll see in a, in a while. Nearly finished now. So, very simple for this. If H pause is less than or equal to the horizontal display area. Uh, yeah, okay, I'll do that in a minute. Uh, and vertical position is less than or equal to the display area, the display area. Uh, then video on equals one equals one else video on equals zero yeah I'll fix that in a second and if actually no I'll fix it now so if it's in the display area, the drawing area, you can draw, else don't. And this will be kind of useful to tur for turning RGB off as well, if it's not in the draw area. So video on process, yep, yeah, that's, that's all good. Ready to draw, ready to test it. This driver is done. So this is not going into a different module. I'm not gonna pass any of the, sig uh, the, the ports through. So just going to do it right here in the VGA driver to test it. Uh, before I test it, just um, did I not add this? Okay. Okay, now it's added. Oh, VGA syntax error. Did you want? Yeah. Okay. Uh, before we move on, just do a quick error check. Two, two errors. H sync, V Y sync. Yes, I did. Line V Y V Y sync and H Y sync. Okay, that's it. That's the only errors. Okay, so I'll just call it draw the process. So, what's going to be looked at here? Quite a few things. Clock 25, H pause, pause, horizontal position, vertical position, video on. Uh, that's it really, not much. Oh, reset, I guess. Uh, not sure what reset will do. Oh, yes, it will turn the RGB off. Okay. In end process. So again, just copy this and get rid of what we don't need. Uh, okay, reset equals one. 
So now dealing with a vector. So we're just going to make it all off. And then, yeah, this is fine. So if um, yeah, yeah, actually, I can just copy this. So now we uh, only want to draw when video on is on. Actually, be even more lazy. Video on equals one. Start the drawing. Else make RGB back to zero, back to black or off. So now, um, to draw a box, we're going to brief explanation back to my tablet. Amazing drawings. So here's a box. Uh, there's the edge of the screen. So I'm going to say if the horizontal position is between, I don't know, 10 and 50, turn RGB on. And we don't have to worry about if it's outside because it's video on, it's going to be off, so it's not going to draw. So if it's between 10 and 50, it's just going to draw a white bar because I'm going to I'm going to just make RGB one on one. So we want to say if it's between these two values, and if it's between two vertical values, I'll do ten and fifty again. I, I don't know why I'm choosing those numbers, but I'm choosing them. Then it will draw in the the box area. This is inverse because it will be black background and white box. So very simple. So if and then, and then, and if, just, uh, and then if it's not in that area, make it back to zero. And if it is in that area, make it to one. Again, this is there's probably way better ways of doing this. I'm showing you the the basics, the basic. Even even when I made a pong game in this, I did it kind of this way. And that might be uh, a future video. So if the horizontal position is greater or equal to ten, and horizontal position position is less than or equals to 60. I should probably do 9 and 59 to make it because it starts from 0 but oh well this is just a test. So if it's between these two numbers it's going to draw. So this will draw the, the bar along the screen. So to make it into a box I'll do capital to make it stand out and actually can be lazy because I chose the same numbers, just change it to V. Vertical position and vertical position. So this should be a finished VJ driver drawing a white box on the screen. And now what's going to happen is going to test it, make the programming file. Uh, one more thing because of how. Um, I don't want the error when I program it, so apply, okay. Okay, good. No errors, so I can proceed to upload the, uh, the programming file onto the board. Uh, I'm using the BASIS 2, so I could use, oh, well, if I turn it on. Could use this uh, the digital adept program, but for anyone else, go into. You should probably already know this. This is not a, 
a basic tutorial on how to do this. This is for people who already know, so you probably know my faults when I've been doing this anyway, but it's okay. Use your drive. Oh, was I in the right folder? No, that's a different one I made. So this one. Oh, no, I don't know why I said yes to that. Anyway, it should be fine. Uh, yep. Should program fine. Anyway, now I'm gonna switch to the camera to see if it worked because I actually never plugged it into the VJ. Okay, I was getting a bit too involved in the programming of the driver. I forgot to make, uh, to add the pins. So that is quite important because it won't know where to put your uh, inputs and outputs into on the device. So implementation constraints file, just call it pins, it's fine. Yes, finish. So this is where everyone's code will, will differ because it depends on your device. Um, oh. Um, actually, I could just add one I have from another one to make it simpler. Uh, yeah, I guess this one. Yes. Yes. Let's do see. Just open. Just want to edit it. Very simple. Okay, that, that took a bit longer than I thought. Alright, uh, this one I was using all the 8 bits, but... Uh, don't need these. So I need... Red, green, and blue, the highest values from each of these to make this work. Uh, net. Hey, sync, vsync, and these are the right positions. Uh, for you, it will be different. One zero. Oh, zero one two. Uh, no, no, two two. Yeah, yes, that's right. So that should be fine. And now I'm going to generate the program file and going to run it with this exact code you saw. So if anything's wrong with it, we'll see and make amendments to it. Here's the monitor. I'm ready to click. Upload right about now, or program right about now. And then, okay, yes. So it woke up and there's the box. And as you can see, in the corner this is because on my uh, FPJ uh, the clock isn't perfect it's imprecise so it's given the wavy lines but anyway this is it this is maybe part one and in the next part maybe it is a maybe uh, I'll make it into a game of pong very simple game be able to push buttons make this move up and down a ball it'll bounce off the ball simple physics it's just going to just bounce directly or inverse its position okay there you have it this is the basic framework of a vj driver this part can be removed but that's all you need now you can make your own projects and display them on the screen 
I'll probably put this somewhere, post it somewhere. It's not very hard. You could obviously pause the video and copy this down. But anyway, that's it.